Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kevin Wu and I'm a serial entrepreneur. Today, I'm here to share insights into how our diets will change in the near future. I founded a company called Ento. Ento is an alternative protein company specializing in edible insects for human consumption. Some of you may be currently thinking, insects for human consumption? Well, hold on to that thought. Perhaps allow me to paint a picture and how, and I would like to begin this story with some background information. Thousands of years ago, society organized itself in the form of hunters and gatherers. Settlements were built around the resources that were available around the land at that time. For example, water from rivers, animals from the forest, vegetables from nearby plains, etc. Over time, society developed into larger settlements and eventually into towns and cities. This led to the development of urban and rural areas. Farming at that time focused predominantly on local livestock and vegetables that were readily available. At that time, there were no machineries, no genetically modified crops or livestock or pesticides and things like that. Fast forward to the early 20th century. There were huge sprawling cosmopolitan cities across Europe and the US. Cities like New York, London, Paris were major urban centers with large amounts of people moving into the cities to seek better opportunities. After World War II, many cities were rebuilding from the war and this also marked the start of the baby boomer generation. This meant rapid urbanization, higher birth rates, increasing population and increased demand for food production. It was during this period that kickstarted the modern agricultural revolution that introduced intensive farming methods through the use of machineries, pesticides and fertilizers. The global population after the war in the 1950s was around 2.5 billion people. From the 1950s onwards, there were huge leaps of advancement in the rise of uh, consumerism, namely in food services such as restaurants and meat-based products, because meat was heavily marketed as something premium, delicious, and also nutritious. This led to the skyrocketing demand for livestock consumption. What most people do not talk about is how our food is produced. The increased demand led to a pressing need to increase supply in a fast and efficient manner. What this meant in practice was that we needed to allocate more resources, more land and resources for the production of food. This has led to mass deforestation around the world. For example, the Great Amazon Rainforest in South America, the largest rainforest in the world that represents over half of the planet's rainforest, why, why the Amazonian rainforest is important to us is because the Amazon comprises of the most biodiverse regions in the world with a rich variety of flora and fauna. The rainforest essentially acts as our lungs of the planet by breathing in carbon dioxide and breathing out oxygen. So what are the driving factors for the deforestation in the Amazonian rainforest? You may ask, is it for paper? Is it for medicine or housing? No, in fact, 91% of the deforestation in the Amazon is linked directly to agriculture, namely cattle production for beef. 6,000 acres are being chopped or burned every hour to create more land for more farming. This equates to 67 football fields per minute. Think of an example closer to home. In Malaysia, we are cutting down our rainforest to make more land available for palm oil production. So whenever you drive out to see the vast expanse of, whenever you drive out of KL, you will see a vast expanse of palm oil plantations along the highways. Essentially, what this means is that we are cutting our rainforest to produce a monocrop, a single type of crop and that, that, that reduces the biodiversity in our country. To summarize, the most worrying result of deforestation is that this effect is irreversible meaning that it will take hundreds of years for our rainforest to recover and rebuild from the harm and destruction we are causing. Fast forward to today in 2021, some 70 over years after the baby boomer generation, we've seen astronomical developments in science, technology, and healthcare. Today, there are close to 8 billion people around the world. That is a threefold increase from the population in the 1950s.
Experts predict that the global population will hit 10 billion people by 2050. And also experts believe that we need to increase our current food production by 70% to feed our future population. So many scientists believe that we cannot sustainably increase our food production without a detrimental impact on our environment. Today, we have seen large efforts by concerned global communities to educate the public on climate change issues and have entrepreneurial efforts. And we've seen entrepreneurial efforts to address climate change. We've, we've also seen the rise of green technologies such as renewable energy, electric cars, the use of sustainable materials. However, Decades of research have proven that one of the largest contributors to climate change is not linked to transportation or energy, but our food production. Therefore, I propose that we must create solutions to address our food, future food security and food sustainability in the near future. Consumers today have, becoming, have become increasingly aware about climate change and how their diets have a direct impact on health and environment. Over the past five years, we've seen the rise of an industry known as alternative proteins, broadly categorized as plant-based, cell-based, and insect-based. I believe that these alternative protein sources in the form of burger patties, nuggets, and snacks are the equivalent of providing greener and more sustainable solutions for our planet. For decades, we have mistakenly believed that protein can only be derived from traditional livestock such as chicken or beef, but that is simply not true. There are large varieties of plants, insects, and cell-based meats that can better fulfill our nutritional needs and at the same time can also reduce our carbon footprint. Some of you may be wondering, how does a trained uh, corporate lawyer end up being an insect protein producer? Well, my inspiration came from a small taco stand in Mexico City, where I tried my first insects in the form of fresh uh, fresh tacos topped with fried grasshoppers. I was informed by the tour guide at the time that it was a delicacy in Mexico, and to my delight, uh, it was tasty and tasted like shrimps. I did some research and eventually found out that insects have extremely high levels of protein and other nutrients such as iron, fiber, and calcium. So insects are not only just nutritious, uh, but also sustainable to produce and requires far fewer resources such as land, water, and feed. So at a point that had me thinking, uh, what if I could promote this wonderful protein source uh, to, the, to the world? I knew the barriers of insect protein would be, would, be, would be the negative stigma attached to it, but what if I could powderize crickets and create products such as burger patties to promote to consumers? And that was how Ento uh, started in 2018. Today, we are proud to be one of the first alternative protein companies based in Malaysia offering tasty, nutritious, and sustainable food products and ingredients. Admittedly, the alternative protein industry is still at its infant stage and products are limited in not just limited in variety, uh, they're also not as readily available and not as price competitive compared to traditional meat-based products. However, in my view, uh, my view is that over time, there will be more variety of tastier products available and there'll be an increase in the availability of alternative proteins at retail locations and eventually prices will become more competitive to traditional meat-based products. Therefore, I'm confident over time consumers will become more and more aware of how our food is linked with climate change and the value proposition of alternative proteins will become more compelling. It is my hope that we see more products and solutions available in the market for the betterment of our future generation. Thank you.